seen a toe. Every day was like the day before for me. Just to take it easy and let the big people do what they do best. From what I was seeing, they seemed to know what they were doing. I was the March baby, and it was now July, a hot summer in the north. Not only was it hot during the long, long days. But the bugs would bite you for most of the evening, when you were trying to cool off. This place wasn't all that comfortable. I was so little that it was hard for me to scratch myself. There were always these bothersome flying things that would buzz around you all night. These creatures were everywhere and on a duty all of the time. It was hard for me to imagine they were all over the entire state. I thought they were just following me around wherever I went, clearly searching for fresh new meat. I overheard my dad say that these bugs. Were the state a bird, whatever that meant? Day and night they were always around, biting me and making me feel itchy. It really sucks to be itchy when you cannot scratch. With all of this torture going on, I was very motivated to go into my dreamers. And be there most of the time. One afternoon, the old lady carried me out with her to feed the pigs. I knew they were pigs because they sure didn't look like goats. They were yucky and really big compared to me. She fed them potato skins. Actually. They liked anything she gave them. I was hanging onto her as she was feeding the beasts their meal. She would throw them stuff, and I would hang on. She almost dropped me once, and boy, did my eyes open wide! I never realized I could react so fast. I was so startled. That I forgot to cry. I wasn't really much of a crier anyhow, since I had everything I needed all of the time. Therefore, I figured I would just enjoy the ride and act out being the strong, silent type. Being my size wasn't that bad, except when strange things started happening. In my pants, that's when it became rather uncomfortable. The maintenance service on the farm was very good, and I was kept neat and tidy all of the time. There was one thing I noticed that really stood out: the old lady took care of me most of the time. Mum was usually in a town and working as a waitress. My new dad, whose name I still did not know, would go into a town also, working as a printer. As for me, I never left the farm. Mum and dad would come home at the end of each day, and then they would be real friendly to each other. Just like the birds and the bees, they would also play with their new little baby, me. It was a great time to be a baby. Time passed at its own pace, and as it did, things began to change. It was easy to see that Mum was a rather strong individual. And usually liked to have things 
her way. She was always rather determined if she decided something, while my new dad was more casual about most events. I figured that they were very young and just starting their new life, and that they had to work out the kinks. It soon became apparent that they were way too young, and that the situation here was looking very funny. I began to think about what else I could do, which of course was nothing. Then, one night, it happened. There was a big blowout between the two of them. One of my dad's friends had seen a mum with someone else in a particular way, and so, boy oh boy, did the attitudes fly about the room. Now, all of a sudden, there was something strange in the air that didn't seem quite right. The wonderful harmony of my all-natural life had taken a turn, and we were headed in a completely different direction. My little head began to spin, and I was feeling silly. I kept wondering to myself, what are they going to do with the baby? The entire situation didn't look good from where I was usually sitting. I figured I'd just wait it out and see what would happen. Funny thing, that's all I could do anyhow. As a time went by, everything did change. My dad, whose name I still did not know, was all of a sudden gone one day. Oh great, I thought, what's our family without a dad? Here was the drama I knew would show up. Mum kept working later and later each night, and so I hardly saw her at all. The old lady, who I finally discovered was my grandmother, confronted Mum one evening about how the baby needed a dad. Mum became rather attitude engaged, and said that that part of her life was over with, and she was going to move out. Mum told Grandma she had saved enough money to leave. From their conversations, I found out that Mum had been with someone who had already been to California. Whoever this person was, seemed to motivate her into making a big change in her life. It was an idea that I really liked. I knew the Pacific Ocean was next to California. Now that this new idea was occurring, I basically forgot about the mum and dad arrangement altogether. Things were looking up. Mum had arranged to go to California to see what it was like, and then she would eventually come back for me, hopefully. I didn't really like the entire idea, and so I made some noise when I heard it. Of course, these big people were already programmed to think that I wanted food or my diapers changed when I made any noise, and so they never really considered the fact that I wanted to be a part of the decision making. I heard mum telling a grandma that there was a big ocean next to California. Of course, there is an ocean next to California, as if she didn't know that. I knew it was the ocean of my dreams, the Pacific Ocean. Well, 
They never mentioned the name, but I knew it was a sow. If I remember correctly, I was about one or so at the time, and bopping around the house like a bouncing baby boy, all excited and ready for the big move. Even though I had this little funny body to deal with, the real me had a much bigger awareness that saw past all the obstacles of the human body and mind. I could see a great destiny for myself, a great exceptional adventure into unknown places, which did seem scary at times, because the earth is not a safe place to live. In those days, Grandma was still doing well. She could do just about anything. I didn't see Grandpa too much at all, because he was usually out doing all the things that farmers like to do. Once in a while, Grandma would walk me around the farm to see all the different things there were, and I would see a Grandpa working away. He would wave to us and smile. As the days passed with them, I really missed the mum. It was a long time before I saw her again, as she was off in a sunny California. While mum was gone, I realised that a boy does need his mum. In the meantime, I figured I would just hang out with the older couple and have a few laughs. They had a TV back then, and the two oldies would watch the weirdest shows. They were weird to me anyhow. The screen was small and hard to see, since they always left me way across on the other side of the room. I'm sure that in their minds, I was a mindless shrimp who didn't really know anything at all. If only they knew. Boy, could I tell them some stories. One of their favourite shows was The Lone Ranger. I really got a kick out of this show too. This lone guy was great. From where I was sitting, this masked hombre could do anything. What a great life he lived. I thought it was rather funny that he was constantly riding around with a strange dude named Yonto. Anyhow, I think that was his name. Sometimes the older people were talking or making a noise, so I couldn't always hear everything that was going on with the TV adventures. At times, it was hard to hear what the lone guy and Yonto were saying, especially since Grandpa would yell a lot at the exciting parts. My guess was that the everyday farm life was not exciting enough for him. I really did get into the act of what the lone guy was doing. I liked it when Yonto would say, Ugh! He was very agreeable. Grandma and Grandpa would also listen to the radio at times. There was a lone ranger show that came on every week. There seemed to be a lot of other funny shows on the TV and radio, but most of them didn't make sense to me. I just liked watching the scenery. The two elders would laugh all the time, and I would sit there and watch them, just taking it all in and laugh too, because it was funny hearing them laugh. I really didn't know if my favourite shows were every day 
or once a week, as a time meant nothing to me. I slept and dreamt most of the time, and ate once in a while. I liked to dream about the big ocean, with the blue sky overhead, and the sun reflecting upon the water like a million diamonds. When I was outside of myself, I felt the best. I would also dream where I was with animals a lot, especially cats. I really like cats, and in my dreamers they would talk to me, and tell me so many funny things about the humans. I liked playing a little a dumb and a numb at times. The idea was to make the elders think that I was not capable of doing anything for myself, because I was a dreamer, and that's how I liked it. It was easy to see that if I showed any real initiative, I'm sure they would have put me to work, because on the farm everyone worked, and little kids were made to be slaves. Looking back at those good old days, it is easy to see that living on a farm is a good life. These people were very simple and caring. The farm life is a good foundation for real humility. If I were your average earth person, it would have been a good life for me, and I would have liked to have stayed, but I could hear the call of the big ocean and my new life of adventure. That would be my destiny. Scene 3 Every day was a new adventure for this little guy. I was now a big two years old or so, and moving around with Grandma all the time, following her around like a house cat. I liked to watch all the interesting things she did. She really did a lot. Even at my age, I was always amazed how she kept so busy. I constantly wondered how she thought of all the things she did, and where she got all the stuff she had. In my little mind, I was thinking that I was gaining a lot of experience just being around her, as she seemed to know just about everything. She was always busy and going non-stop with all her routines, and would truly wear my little body out and so I had to take numerous naps each day. It was fine with me, because naps were always my favourite thing to do. Later on, I learned that most kids don't like to take naps, but I wasn't like most kids, because I was here for a real purpose, and I liked my naps. One afternoon, in the beginning of the winter, the sky began to get cloudy and gloomy. I was now more aware of the change of the seasons, and began paying attention to the weather in this strange land called Minnesota. The rain began to gently fall and make a pitter-patter sound on the roof which I liked to hear. It was so soothing and comforting that I went right into my nap mode and dozed off into the place where I wanted to be. I was in the unseen worlds and on the shoreline again, sitting in the sand and gazing out at the great ocean. This is the place I loved the best, and I always wanted to stay, but I had the body back on earth that had to remain still 
or I would return and have to deal with it. As I was sitting there, with the sun shining brilliantly down, and those little white puffy clouds gently cruising by in the sky, something funny happened. As I slowly looked over and down the beach a ways, I could see there was a someone coming towards me. This place had a real long beach and a lot of sand and openness to it. Along so much of the shoreline, there were huge, majestic palms all over the place. As I kept staring in the distance, I could soon see that it was a man on a horse coming towards me. My awareness was much better in this world than on the earth, as I watched the rider come closer and closer to me. The man on the horse rode up right in front of me and stopped, then stood silently still for some time. He was sitting in the saddle and looking down at me. As I looked up at him, with his head and body silhouetted with the sun in back of him, I couldn't see the features of his face, because his back was to the brilliant light from the sky and shining all around his head. He looked like one of those ancient, saintly fellows, as the light shined all around him. Sensing something very wonderful about what was taking place as I looked at him, he just sat on his horse without saying a word. Then he slowly stepped down from his saddle right in front of me. I immediately stood up to see what he was going to do. He seemed to look me over as he bent down to get a little closer. I was a bit shorter than he was, and I felt like such a kid, which I was. Then he said, You are coming along very nicely. I didn't know what he meant by what he said. Then he spoke again. How do you like my horse? I stood there and looked at him for a moment and thought about what he had said. I wasn't sure that I understood the question. I did like his horse, but I didn't have an answer with what he asked. Then he repeated himself. How do you like my horse? All of a sudden, I became a little excited and remembered the lone ranger and his sidekick, whose name I couldn't remember. I started thinking about all the fun he had, riding everywhere on his horse. He is great, I said. I love horses. The man laughed out loud as I was trying to make out his features. He looked to be about six feet tall, with a long blonde hair that rested upon his shoulders. What stood out the most were his striking blue eyes and how intense they were. The funny thing was that he wasn't wearing normal cowboy clothes. He was wearing some kind of robe that was long and all white. All of this thinking on my part was taking a bit of time and looking up at him he didn't seem to mind at all. It was as though he had all the time in the world to be with me at this very moment. I could sense something wonderful about him. As I looked at him and he looked at me for I don't know how long, he finally said, would you like to ride him? Then I became a little perplexed and thought, 
Did he just ask me if I wanted to ride his horse? Yes, he said. That is exactly what I said. Suddenly, I became aware he knew what I was thinking as I pondered for a moment and then said to him, OK, Mr. Shaw, thanks. I would like to ride him. By the way, what is your name, sir? I asked as he handed me the golden coloured rope that was around the horse's neck. My name is Gopal Das, he said with a big smile. That is a funny name, sir. I never have heard of it before. Where are you from? I asked. We are both from the same place, beyond the gods of a man. The all is, young Dwayne, he said as he continued to smile. What gods? I thought for a moment. And what else did he say? I had this haunting feeling that I had met this person before, but I just couldn't recall it. Now that I had a new body and a new mind, I had to deal with my young and unaware physical and mental vehicles. I knew in some way I understood him, but the little body was not as yet responding the way I wanted it to. I had to learn to be patient for now. There are many other worlds besides this one, and you already know this. In time, you will know why you are here again, young Dwayne. So for now, enjoy the horse, and I will see you soon, he said, and then he disappeared right before my eyes, like the wind. Ha, huh? I thought. I stood there for the longest time, with my mouth wide open, and staring into the open air, where he had been standing. I thought, how amazing all of this is. I was now realising there was so much more to this world, than I somehow have come to know, more so than just being at the ocean. Also, what do I do about the horse? All of a sudden, there was a very loud sound, like a big kaboom. I immediately woke up, with a startling reaction in my little bed, back on the farm. There was a huge lightning storm that was now taking place in the strange land of Minnesota. Earlier, it had started out as a gentle falling rain, which had now become a very noisy and a scary situation. I could feel the little body jittering around in a funny panic mode. I was so locked into the stimulation of it that I couldn't let go. I felt very tense and estranged with myself. Grandma and Grandpa were busy securing all the doors and windows so that all of us would be safe. There were roaring surges of thunder that kept crashing all about the house, from one side to the other. I could see the lightning flashing through the curtains, making streaks across the room that seemed to want to get me. I immediately pulled the covers over my head in a silly panic. I could feel my whole body continue to shake and quiver. This was the scariest situation I had ever been in. The noise was a constant and very loud. For the first time, I felt really trapped by this physical world. This place was no longer a fun place to be, but more like a horrifying nightmare. The storms in the north 
can get really big sometimes. I was so scared, really scared. I continued to hide under my blanket as the noise from the storm raged on. My legs were shaking and my little body was sweating. The thunder was really loud and non-stop. I'm sure most of you who are reading this may think this part is funny, but it wasn't, at least not to me. To be continued.